Hi everyone and welcome. I'm out here in my garden and what I have here in front of me are my composting barrel. This is just where all my garden waste and my kitchen scraps all go. At least the kitchen scraps that I don't put aside that I plan to feed to my worm colony. And then what I have here is what I really do consider as part of my worm colony. It's what I consider as my outdoor worm bin. Last year I had considered it as my overwinter bin because I really had set it up out here strictly for the purposes of trying to run it through the entire winter to see how it does and now that we're in winter again we're actually you know in season number two of giving this outdoor worm bin experiment overwintering process a try and the worms are doing great we checked in on this bin it was only a few days ago as a matter of fact and we had added a whole bunch of leaves and um, I think we, we even checked in on this container too and looked around and we saw all kinds of worms hanging out in here too but today i'm going to be putting stuff into these systems both of them are going to get a little treat and what they're getting is the stuff that you see right down here and it's pretty nasty <laughs> you can see there's all kinds of mold and nasty stuff growing on these tomatoes these were just the tomatoes that i pulled out of my garden when it was time to take the garden down right before the first frost I had placed all these tomatoes into these, um, I guess, into this cardboard box over here and just into this um, plastic box here. I'm trying to give them a chance to ripen up. And you can see a lot of them did ripen up. Some of them are still green. Um, and some of them did get eaten, but these are the ones that didn't get eaten. And they're just starting to get a little bit gross. But I got a feeling that from a worm's point of view, they're going to be a, a nice delicacy. So I'm going to be throwing all of this stuff into my two outdoor bins. And I figured while we're at it, we could take a little peek to see how the worms are doing in them. So I'm going to put on my glove here and uh, let's get to work. Okay, I'm hands-free now. I've got the camera up on my forehead. And I've taken a few minutes here to separate the, um, the, the tomatoes that are a little bit less moldy and gross from the ones that are really, really moldy and really gross. And I figured that we'd give the really, really gross ones to the worms in the outdoor worm bin. And that we would give these maybe not so broken down ones to the, to the outdoor compost bin. So before we dump in the fresh tomatoes, I thought we might rummage around in here and see how things are looking. We've had a, we've had a little bit of cold weather now that we're in winter, but it's, um, I don't know, the forecast makes it look like it's gonna be a pretty mild, couple weeks coming up and there's going to be temperatures dropping down into the freezing range overnight on a regular basis but there's high temperatures forecasted that are expected to even be up around 50 on a couple occasions and these are all fahrenheit temperatures i'm referring to so i uh i don't think we're going to have any sort of major concern for the worms being too cold going forward and right away, I've only um, pulled pulled back a little bit of material. And right away, we could see a good number of worms cruising around over here, picking away at the different scraps of kitchen waste that's been thrown in here. I always find it so interesting to see how dark these worms are. That's just compared to the fairly pale color of the worms that occupy the bins down in my wormery in my basement makes me wonder what causes that because i have a feeling that they're more or less the basically the same types of worms but the ones that i find out here in my outdoor bins just seem to have a much darker appearance maybe they're coming out and hanging out in the sunshine getting suntanned <laughs> Now you saw how much material I plan on placing in here. It's a good amount. And, you know, as you saw when you first looked in here, there was just stuff thrown right on top. Just some chopped up onions, some pieces of pepper. So everything typically gets just thrown right in on top. I don't go to any extra effort to try to bury any of the food that gets thrown in this bin. The only thing I do is I cover up with those pieces of cardboard that you saw resting on top of the container when we first came out here. 
So I don't really go out of my way to make sure that this stuff is covered. I'm sure different creatures probably walk by here at night and try to get a piece of what's in here. Sometimes I do see the cardboard pushed aside. Um, footprints on it. <laughs> Little footprints of creatures hanging out coming over to see if they can pick out a piece of kitchen scrap that may have been considered by um, by me to be scrap but might be considered by them to be a nice little delicacy or treat so I've really given myself a nice large hole here into which we can drop today's portion and it is kind of cool just looking around the perimeter here everywhere that I've stacked up material every handful has had worms in it and they're all just cruising around enjoying the bounty of food that they're surrounded by all kinds of good stuff out here so why don't we drop in these tomatoes for them it's gonna be a lot of extra moisture and a lot of uh, delicious food for them so they're uh, they're just gonna get it all in one felt swoop there it goes here it goes one two three kaboom and there goes my garden or what's left of it from last year's garden so look at all that extra moisture that gets injected into the bin with these tomatoes i mean i would have to say that the majority of what they're receiving here is water so after all what is a tomato it's pretty much all water so i got a feeling they're really going to love that i might have to come back in here in a few days just to see what's happening amidst all of these tomatoes i bet you they're going to be swarming around this stuff so i'm just going to backfill it a little bit so it's somewhat covered up not to say that it's so important to do so it's really not a big deal i don't want to go crazy covering it up because like i said i might be back in here <laughs> in a short while to see how things are progressing but i figured it's probably best just to cover it up so that they really can if they want to access that material from any direction they can crawl at it from below come at it from above so hopefully that'll uh, make it really easy for them to to get at it so let's head over to the other bin the bin that i consider to be my outdoor worm bin my overwinter bin they're going to be receiving these really moldy tomatoes and it's not quite as much as the uh the other bin got I didn't want to go overboard because like you've heard me say about this container here I think I even said it about maybe a month and a half ago that this bin probably does not need any food not for a good long time but even um even last time we were in here which I think was maybe nine days ago which was when we decided to put all these leaves in here I had actually registered all of these leaves in my tracking spreadsheet as a formal feeding of this bin and now obviously all the tomatoes that they're going to receive are definitely going to be counted as a formal feeding too you know but with all this leafy matter here you can tell i'm definitely getting up around the edge i don't know how deep i'm going to be able to dig down into this container to see how things are progressing i'll do my best to give our give us a little peek at the activity in here but I don't want to spill stuff all over the place. There are certain spots, like right here, we're seeing little congregations of worms hanging out together, probably enjoying some more palatable piece of food that they found. And that's what this bin basically consists of. It's almost all edible stuff. When I, um, when I populated this bin, when I extracted worms out of the other container out of the compost barrel to populate this container with each handful of worms I, prob I probably bought over an equal amount if not more of the um the material that they were inhabiting which would have just been a whole bunch of uncomposted food scraps so there's a whole lot of stuff for them to break down in this container that's for sure so if I left this bin for months it would still probably have a whole lot of leftover stuff that they can continue feeding on and i've actually made that sort of reference in the past saying that i could probably leave this bin for a couple months and maybe i should 
especially after we plop in all these tomatoes. So this could very well be the last feeding this thing gets till springtime. So let's make uh, let's make do with getting these tomatoes in here before the, the hole that I dug collapses. And here again, I'm simply gonna roll these babies in here, although you could tell from the look of them, a lot of these are not rolling anymore, they're just mush. All right, kind of glad to be done with this supply of tomatoes. And I got a feeling the worms are really going to appreciate all this moldy, fairly heavily broken down, juicy material. So uh, I've already broken half of them open at this point. So all that moisture is just going to go dripping down. Maybe I'll leave the rest of them to remain intact so that the moisture doesn't all just go down to the bottom and vanish out the out of the container so i think they're going to appreciate this this looks like it's going to be a, a fun spot for the worms to hang out in so i got a feeling we're going to be back out here soon just to see how the progression of this tomato feast is coming along like i said there's going to be some nice mild days coming up so coming out here to spend some time with the outdoor containers should be pretty easy i won't have to clear away snow <laughs> or or shovel to get at these containers so i'll uh i'll take care of what remains out here which isn't much but i just want to get things covered up here and get things back to the way they were a little cleaning up of my uh my gloves and whatnot but uh, i won't keep you around for that because that's all boring let me just really quickly before i go say happy new year it's the first of january 2021 and uh want to wish everyone a very happy new year and hopefully enjoyed the video if you did as always, please remember to give me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, also please consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Bye now.